I've played Guild Wars 2 for over 20,000 hours, and I've learned a whole lot and collected just about everything in the game. So it's a perfect time to go around again. Join me in the adventures of my completely fresh account known only as the Microtransaction Enjoyer on the quest of obtaining and unlocking everything in the game, from legendary gear and mounts to living world story episodes, maps, and ultimate gem store quality of life, purely through efficient and somewhat sensible gameplay. No real money required. I guess we could actually, you know what we could do? Is we could just go to all of the maps, right? Because we have every, we have literally everything unlocked now. So it might actually be worth simply visiting the maps. Oh, yeah, we'll do the Ascended thing. Yeah, we'll do Ascended. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so we need to get to Sandswept Isles. Uh, let's see. Uh, what is the best way to do that? The best way to do that is actually just to try, is to do this, yeah. So we actually have a lot of, oh, we only have three teleport to friends, so we're going to have to be a little bit careful. We'll, we'll try and dodge. Oh, great. I should have joined that group very quickly. But yeah, the way we can do this without playing through the story, because I'm very lazy, I'm just going to look for a group and then teleport to a friend in. A really good way to do this, by the way, is if you have a friend, um, you can... Ask your friend to go to the map and then TP you in. Do I have any more of these, actually? I don't think I do. We have the Diffloric Crystals in order to get the trinket, and I already have the Voltile Magic. So we make it happen. Uh, let's see. Are there any maps that I really want to unlock? Uh, getting Oil Meta would be quite nice. Oil Meta is actually pretty good. So it would be good to have that map unlocked. Oh, we can do... Oh, we can do DRMs, guys. Dude, I should have joined the script. There was a bounty group there, and I can't go there. That's actually really sad. Uh, I think I will actually go ahead and... Oh, no! This player isn't there anymore. I guess it's a little bit late. Maybe there's not much going on right now. Thunderhead Peaks. We can actually just go ahead and teleport in. I do want to unlock this map, because it's uh, a good map to do in the meta train. So I'm going to port in. Uh, okay, good. Right, so let's go ahead and get this unlocked. We just need at least one waypoint here, right? And the meta event that uh, we actually want to do here is the southern one. We might as well grab that waypoint while we're here, though. Ah, uh, yeah, I need to get Grothmar. That's true. Grothmar is big. It's huge in the meta train. Because almost all of the events on Grothmar are really good. Uh, the elemental, the ooze pits. Yeah, yeah, we absolutely need Grothmar. That is a non-negotiable one for sure. Non-negotiable. The met Actually, that one is trash, weirdly enough. Um, the ones that are good are Doomlore, uh, Ooze, and the Effigy. Those three are excellent um, and are really, really good. They're good to blast. The Metal Legion one actually sucks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can... Yeah, we, we don't... Yeah, we can just walk to Grothmar, actually. That's true. We don't need to teleport because it's uh, Sheer Peaks Pass, isn't it? So we can just walk out of the instance and it will take us to Grothmar. Uh, actually, we could maybe get the... Oh, we could go and get the, the tome here, actually. We need to be a bit careful with spending our magic. We need 4,000 to buy the trinket. Here we go. Thunderhead Peaks Teleportation Scroll. We can afford that. Is that really worth it, though? Um, do I need that right now? I'm not sure if I do. I probably don't need that. It's a thousand magic. Nah, I don't want that. We have the waypoint, though. So that's pretty good. Sandswap Isles? Ah, perfect. Great. So now we can get to Sandswap Isles. Great. Right. Now, we definitely want to get this. Wait, do we want to get this? I'm not going to portal to Sandswap Isles very often, am I? No. Nah, screw that. Yeah, we can get a free 32 slot bag, which is nice. And here it is. Let's go. Are you ready? The final trinket gamers. Multifaceted Diflorite earrings. Boom! There we go. And that's going to be Celestial. There we have it. And with that... We have full ascended trinkets. And we'll be able to get uh, more or less to um, 108 agony resistance, which we need for our tier threes. And then we can get to tier three. We can do tier three soon. 
very soon. I need to pick myself up a few uh, weapons and armor pieces using strike mission shards. And we are going to be there. Ooh. We're going to be there fast. Okay. Right. Grothmar next. And we'll just do that one using the strike mission trick. Yes. Strike mission trick. So what we're going to do here. I'm just going to open just a random, uh, random instance, basically. Random instance for Shiva Peaks Pass. Here we go. DRM. Oh, let's go. Dragon response missions, gamers. Let's do this. And then we can just leave the instance, and it should take us to Grothmar Wardowns. I think it should, right? And then here we go. Do you want to return to Grothmar Valley? Yes, I do. Done. And this is a really important map. I'll grab the waypoints here. And this means we... I need to get Jahai Bluffs as well for Death Branded Chatra. Then I basically have all of the important meta events. I love this map too. This map is really nice. Looks lovely. And we're going to grab all the appropriate waypoints that we need. I think I'll get the portal scroll for this one too, actually. Oh, I don't think it will let me actually. I think Ice Brood Saga, you have to play the story first. So I guess I can't actually get the portal scroll just yet. But that's something that's uh, on the menu at some point. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, as you can see here. The portal scroll is here. But we have to actually complete the story first. So we can't quite grab that. That's fine, though. Uh, where are we going now? Uh, we are going Jahai Bluffs, maybe? For Death Branded Shatra. Oh. Which ones? Okay, so... I mean, I guess we could unlock Drizzlewood. Although we can just walk to Drizzlewood, can't we? Yeah, we'll do Drizzlewood while we wait for some more maps to pop up. Because we can actually go there now. We can do the same thing. We can do the, the uh, Sheer Peaks Pass thing, but with Cold War. So here's how we go to Drizzlewood, gamers. Check it out. Drizzlewood! So, in, strike mission, cold war, and then leave. And that will take us to Drizzlewood Coast. Nice. Oh, I mean, we could do a bit of this. I'm actually interested in doing a Drizzlewood Coast speed run, actually, and trying to optimize it and just have fun, right? Would be fun... Boom. Done. Waypoint unlocked. Very nice, very nice. There we are. That map is unlocked now. Let's see. What else do we want to do? Are there any Season 3 maps that we're absolutely looking for? Not really. I will get them, obviously, you know, because they're fun. And I actually, you know, I do quite a lot. I've got a bit of a soft spot for the Season 3, um, for the Season 3 ones, actually, guys. I really do. They are rather lovely. Love Ember Bay. Bloodstone Fen's really nice. Um, Lake Doric is really cool, actually. Dracos Mons is pretty sick. And... Siren's Landing, right? Um, it's a very, very strong thing to have. Let's see if we can get into Jahai Bluffs. Uh, <laughs> wait, hang on. No, no, I will, uh, I will actually not. Actually, you know what, guys? Look, we're doing this because I'm going to demonstrate the power of friendship, okay? Uh, look, this is what you can do if you want to get into a map. Uh, you could actually go ahead and ask a friend of yours to go to the map and then teleport to them like this. There we go. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually important. It's the power of friendship, right? Okay, power of friendship. Let's go. Yeah, you could ask people in Lion's Arch. And, and actually, people help, right? They actually do. That's not even a meme. Like, if you say, hey, can someone help me out? Um, and teleport me, you know, do, do me a teleport to a friend to a map. People will actually quite often say yes. And you can always offer them to tip someone, right? Like tip someone two gold or something for doing that. Um, but, you know, people are actually very happy to do it. Uh, so it's, it's not actually completely outlandish. And obviously, if you're in a guild, like people in your guild can help you out. What's important to do here is to make sure that you get the portal scrolls. I think I'll grab the Jahai portal scroll because we're definitely going to be coming here. This is an important meta event to do. Uh, so let's go ahead and go over there and get that unlocked. A oh, one gold. Fine, one gold. There isn't a randomizer, huh? Is it not a randomizer? Could have sworn there was. Huh. There's no randomizer? That's crazy. I'll just leave it like this, to be honest. That looks alright. Yeah. Is that alright, guys? I think it's fine. 
The horns are a bit weird. What do you guys think about these horns? Are we not liking these horns or what, guys? What are we feeling about this? Yeah. Yeah. Is it good? Cringe? What ones do you guys want? What about like these ones? This is like the first one. The classic horns, like that. Mid row first column. Wait, mid row first column. This one? You guys like these ones? Or what? Is that good? Yes? Alright, okay, fine, that'll do. Uh Monocle, Eagle Eye Goggles, or Universal Multi Tool. Oh, definitely not that. Uh I'm going for a monocle. Am I going for a monocle? Yeah, I'm going for this monocle, guys. Um, I overcome it with ferocity, because I'm playing mech. I am proud to be... Well, I mean, we're an engineer, so we're Iron Legion. We're role-playing, right? I would die for my warband. Especially my sparring partner. Dinky. Ha ha ha. What do, you, what do you guys want? I actually haven't played the Charles story, so I've got no idea. What are we doing, guys? Are we, like, role-playing here? What are we doing? Which one? Do you guys have any preference on our sparring partner? Dinky. Dinky? Right, Dinky it is. To tell me the soldier that sired me is a loyal soldier, a sorcerer shaman, an honorless gladium. Um... Well, I'm playing mech, so honorless gladium. <laughs> yeah, that was never gonna work. Um, you can't stop me, CMC. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> How is that one letter off? Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> Where we could do this, right? You you can't stop me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I think we shouldn't do dev. No, no. No, we, sh we shouldn't we shouldn't do dev uh, names in the name. I think that's actually not... That's not good. I, I actually don't like that. Uh, it's, it's a funny meme, but... Um, uh, he'd probably find it funny. Um... Uh... Um, uh like CMC arch nemesis. <laughs> All right, fine. All right, there we go. <laughs> We're in. All right, good. All right, so this is something that <laughs> I'm about to show you something uh, pretty big. Pretty big. Also, that's quite loud, isn't it? So, why was I so excited looking at this currency? So, this is one of the massive upsides of playing World vs. World. See these? Testimonies of Jade Heroics. One of those converts to one hero point, right? So, what this means is, is that because we, we have a level 80 booster, we can go ahead and level up our character using our level 80 booster, which we're about to do next. And then after that, what we can do is we can go to World vs. World and immediately fully unlock Mechanist. Instantly. Which is obviously extremely convenient from our perspective. That's going to be a really, really good time. Because it means we can get our spec, boom, immediately. Really big upside of World vs. World. Really speeds up that new character, smooths the, you know, kind of oils the gears on the new character process very, very nicely, which is just fantastic. And of course, World vs. World also gives you a lot of tomes, right? And uh, those tomes help you to level up your character. Obviously, in future, we're going to have to actually use tomes to level up this character. This is the last boost I have. I'm not going to be buying any more boosts. They aren't really good value. What we'll do is we'll simply be using level 80, uh, level, you know, level boost tomes that we simply get by playing other games. You get them from logging in, from daily logins. We get them from PvP. We get them from World vs. World. Just from doing a bunch of random stuff. 
Um, so yeah, super convenient um, from World Versus World. One of the best things. This is something that is very interesting um, about World Versus World. The gold per hour in World Versus World is not amazing, but there's a lot of efficiency you can get. You can get stat infusions for like ultimate min-max at an incredibly cheap price. With, in fact, without really spending a lot of gold at all. You can unlock hero points. You can get runes really easily uh, for, you know, kind of runes on the cheap using World Versus World currency. So the rewards, again, they're not amazing for farming gold, but they are excellent for convenience stuff, for kind of making your game a little easier to play, especially when it comes to playing more than one character. You can play, you can really make it easier to have alts and multiple characters using World vs. World. And of course, you can even get gear, right? You can get um, Ascended gear, you can get trinkets, you can get, um, you know, hell, you can even get le um, ritualist stats from World vs. World, actually. It's like the only place you can get them in a consistent way, so yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, great. We are now done. And let's go ahead and activate our level 80 boost. So here we go. We're going to begin our trial. And we're going to go directly to the Silver Wastes. Here we go. Yes. Here we go. Boop. Oh, oh you even get a rifle. That's really nice. Oh, that's huge. That's so good, actually. Um, so we're going to confirm this boost. Consume. There we are. And we're going to unlock all of that. Lovely. And now, here's where the magic comes in. Uh, what we can go ahead and do is we can go to World vs. World. Let's go. You just go to Edge of the Mist. It's fine. Or anywhere. Any uh, Anyone works. And it's time to unlock this character. We go to the Heroics Notary over here. Like this. And this is what we want. We want Notarized Scroll of Maguma Heroics, Desert Heroics, and Jade Heroics. Now, be careful here. Um, if you buy, if you overbuy these, it will let you do that, and you can end up not getting enough. Because, um, uh, for example, if you, this is not really relevant for your first time doing it, but if you want to unlock all three elite specializations by doing this, don't buy 750, um, you know, don't buy 75 Notarized Scrolls of Maguma Heroics. There are not 75 hero points in Maguma Heroics, uh, of, in, in, in uh, Heart of Thorns. You will burn them and the game will let you do that. Okay, so don't, if you're doing all three elite specs in one go, which you can do, do not buy them all from the same place. You can do 25 of each. So we can do 25 uh, Maguma Heroics, we can do 25 Desert Heroics, we can do 25 Notarized Jade Heroics. If you can see, the, oh, you, it does refund it. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, because I've done this a few times and I thought that I just burned them. Oh, well. Warning averted, I guess. Nice. Huh. Yeah. I never looked. I thought, no, I burned it. What have I done? That's okay, then. Not too bad. Well, let's go ahead and get this going. I'll do the... I'll do Maguma because... Why not, I guess? Uh, and here we go. Boom! And each of these gives us a one random hero challenge from the Maguma jungle, which is 10 hero points. You can see them unlocking. And then, lo and behold, Mechanist, boom. There we go. How convenient is that? Nice. Get our free exotic items, and our character is good to go. We are now a Mechanist. So we can go ahead and get our mech build in immediately. And we'll actually set up our builds. So we can do this as the power alack mech. So we'll have our power alacrity... Mechanist set up here like this. Okay, we want that. So this is our power alacrity mech building. This is actually weird. We can get bizarrely close to power alack mech, can't we? Immediately. Um, because we actually already have a rifle uh, and full c and celestial gear, right? So we could actually do a pretty decent, like with no changes, we've actually got ourselves a non-horrible... Um, 
build that actually will work just fine. Like, just out of the gate immediately. Like, this is the setup we have. We have our grenade kit, our force signet, shift signet. You can do mortar kit here. You can do supply crate. There's a bunch of cool stuff you can do with a healing turret. You can take a rectifier signet as well if you want a bit more healing. Honestly, med kit wouldn't be a horrible option for us, actually, because we have uh, some healing power and boon duration, so we could be like a mega hybrid, in fact. Really wouldn't be bad, especially seeing as you can kind of go into med kit whenever you want, and we also have some boon access there. So that actually wouldn't be bad whatsoever to go with this setup. But yeah, here we go. We are actually in business immediately. And that's going to be our power mech. So this is power alack mech. And then our second build template over here will be the same. It will be heal mechanist. We're just going to do heal mechanist here. So that's going to be uh, alchemy. Like this. And we'll get HGH. And then finally, we want to get ourselves inventions. Now, we don't have the gear for this. We're going to need to buy some items. We need a mace. Oh, we actually have a mace. Can it get Celestial? Ugh. Well, I mean, Zealot, I guess, but... No, that's a bit unfortunate. Uh, yeah, we need to buy ourselves a, uh, a mace. We'll get... We're just getting a Senin mace, right, with our strike mission currency, but... We just go ahead and go like this, and then our heal mech build, again, very standard, is going to look a little bit like this. Elixir gun, and then barrier signet. There we go. That's our heal mechanist build. And there we go. We've got ourselves a very, very functional character very, very early on. This is... Heal mech. There we are. And that's just an amazing build. Going to be great for filling that full healer role and also the alacrity position. Uh, when we go into instance content, which is great, we can also get ourselves a scrapper down the line. We'll definitely want to get power scrapper on this build because on this character, because power scrapper is really good. But yeah, there we go. This build is pretty much good to go. Pretty much good to go, in fact. You love to see it. You really, really do. Uh, so the thing is, is that obviously the rune isn't great here. We, we need to, we're going to have to refine our setup here a little bit. And yeah, you could play Condi on this build as well. Condi would probably be like a Condi Alak mech would probably a little bit, be a little bit better. But to us, I don't really like that build that much. I think the power build is more fun. Um, so I'm probably going to play power and then eventually gear it with uh, the actual like regular power build. The power alacrity build. So there it is. Very nice. Very, very, very nice. And yeah, when it comes to um, the med kit thing on this one, you still have a burst heal, you have vital burst, and you can actually blast a water field here as well. So if you want to do something like this, what you can do is this. You can throw down your bomb and then blast it like that, right? And then leap through it as well for even more healing. So you can actually heal yourself decently. Um, but yeah, I mean, you don't need to do this. You, I, I actually really like healing turret uh, a lot on this build. Um, one of the really good things about Mechanist, actually, is that NG heal skills are really good. Specifically healing turret. This is an amazing skill. Look at that. It's an AoE Condi Cleanse, removing two conditions from allies, and also doing a burst of healing, like a, a five target 2.8k heal. But here's the thing. It also is a water field. So we blast it and we get another heal on top of that. So we actually end up healing our allies a lot when we do this. A very, very good skill. And bear in mind, in what well, we're in World vs. World right now, so the cooldown is 30 seconds, but, of course, um, in PvE, it's 20 seconds. Yeah, there is a bit of a bug there. It takes some getting used to, but yeah. And you can go further, right? Um, we have Mortar Kit. So um, this is like a perfectly okay thing to take, even on a power DPS build, right? And definitely on a Connie DPS build, Connie Mechanist. And we can just go boom and get a water field down. And then, of course, you can leap through that. You can blast. You can do whatever. Uh, and it also pulses healing at the same time. Um, but yeah, that or Supply Crate. It's funny enough, Supply Crate will also have a similar effect here, actually. Because, of course, Supply Crate actually drops down that. And you can blast that healing turret um, by detonating the Supply Crate to get an area heal, too. But yeah, there it is. We are done, guys. We have got our character ready to go. And it is named CMC can't stop me. But yeah, that... Uh, one thing that is going to be a little annoying for this character, and this is why I want more shared inventory slots, is because we aren't going to be have, uh, we're not going to be able to access our portal scrolls on this guy because, well, we only have one, so we're going to put our VIP pass in there probably. I think so. I think one of the next big purchases um, that we're going to set up here actually is um, we're going to get five shared inventory slots, so we can have all of our portal scrolls on both characters at the same time. You could, of course, move them between characters, and I'll probably do that. Okay, uh, to just get this unlocked, but um, I'm very lazy and I'm not doing that for very long. Okay, um, that's uh, I'm not about that. Yeah, but yeah, we could also play Condi, and we'll get and to play Condi on this build, um, you would essentially play a fairly um, similar setup here. 
right? Um, with all of these traits, you don't really change that. Uh, you don't really change that much. You just go with uh, you. Well, you can do pistol, pistol, or mace, pistol. Those are both good. In fact, we could kind of set up the build here if we wanted to do a condition mechanist, um, like a condition alacrity mechanist, which again would work really well with our Celestial build. The mech stuff is the same. Uh, if you don't need might, you could obviously go for more damage. Uh, and that's the same on power, by the way. If you don't need might application, um, then you can just go ahead and take the cannons for a power build for more DPS. And you can take these arms here as well for more condition damage. But a lot of the time, you're also going to actually want to um, give out might on a build like this. So this trait actually is really nice. It's going to be a big DPS increase um, to your team. I hate mechas. Nice. Good name. And then here for the Colony build, it's very similar. Uh, it's obviously going to be firearms, and you just take all the Condi stuff, right? We want our chemical rounds, thermal vision, and then incendiary powder. So that's uh, burning duration, more expertise, and then more expertise on our pistol skills and more condition damage there. And then uh, what do we take over here? Um, oh, man. I'm, I'm pretty sure it is still explosives, actually. I think. Dude, I, I actually don't know the uh, build for this. This is one of the builds I'm less familiar with. Probably is. Would it be tools? I can't think it would be tools, right? Um, and it's not going to be, it's not going to be inventions, so it has to be, uh, explosives at that point. Um, what would we even take it? I guess glass cannon for more damage, um, and then, uh, we just do whatever here, I guess, and then get shrapnel, right? Yeah, and then we just get shrapnel here, right? Uh, what would we take in the middle one here? Uh, maybe more frosty? Probably more frosty, I guess? Or maybe, um, aim assisted. Yeah, it must be explosive temper. I must, this is, must be better for Condi, right? Because you just get more stats. And then with Shrapnel and then Glass Cannon. These ones don't really do anything. Uh, so we don't want that. Yeah, so it must be that. And fine, that's a really interesting thing to learn. You know, that's a little bit of a little bit of a kind of a fun, you know, a, a fun little tidbit. Um, you can kind of figure out a build by just looking. Oh, you still do Amos' Rocket. Damn, that's a oh, fucking OP. Holy shit. Well, fair enough then. Uh, but you can kind of figure out like what's about right just by... Uh, just by looking at the abilities. I, I actually don't know this build. I just looked at the traits and figured it out. And then for skills, it's going to look pretty similar to the other builds. Um, so we can do Condi Alak. For the skills, it's going to look very similar. We can have a healing turret. Mortar kit's actually really good here because we have a poison field that we want to use. Uh, and drop down, we want grenade kit. Obviously, uh, grenade kit is has a lot of Condi on it. We have bleeding here. We have poison as well. And in fact, well, it's even good on power, of course. So we want grenade kit. And we're going to round this out uh, by taking our Condi signet, I believe. Because this gives us 10% extra condition damage. Uh, so that's really good. And then I imagine we are doing flamethrower, if I'm not mistaken. Ooh, wait, are we? Um, maybe it's shift signet, actually. Um, ooh... That's a good question. Flamethrower is really... We don't have the tool belt, actually. But this does give us napalm. Uh, oh, wait. What about bomb kit, though? Ah, we've got some decisions here. Yeah, because bomb kit is also really nice because we have firebomb. Uh, and we also have the confusion bomb, too, which is really, really strong. Um, I have a feeling it's, um, it's, it's got to be shift signet, hasn't it? Because of, um, of the damage here, actually. Oh, I'm not actually sure. It's... Uh, Ooh, grenade kit or bomb kit? That's super interesting. I'm actually just going to look it up. I'm not sure enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I am not sure enough what it is. Um, grenade kit and bomb kit? And not the Condi signet. Ah, interesting. Yes. Oh, Okay. And then uh, the laser. The laser is better. Oh, yeah. It's quite a lot of burning, actually, isn't it? Yeah, look at that. That's, um, yeah. Five stacks of nine seconds of burning. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, that is pretty good, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that one's a little bit of a tricky one to figure out, uh, for sure. To be clear, though, all of those... Um, all of those situations would have been okay. Like, it wouldn't have been, like, horrible if I'd picked some of the other ones. Uh, it's just that, you know, finding what's optimal is going to be, um, is going to be a little bit, you know, a little bit more difficult, obviously. But yeah, you can kind of figure out this kind of stuff there, you know what I mean? Um, and get the right things. But there's actually a lot of good options here. There's a lot of really good skills on NG, right? This bomb does a lot of damage with burning. We have confusion damage here as well um, on this setup. Um, and then I imagine mace, like if you use mace or a pistol main hand also is somewhat situational. I feel like mace might be a little bit better in general because it's like a really strong weapon, but it might be a heavily situation actually, depending on um, if it's a confusion boss or not, if you want to use pistol main hand, for example. Um, 
But yeah, interesting one. Very interesting one. Yes. Pistol, pistol. Dude, I don't like pistol, pistol. Maybe I don't play- maybe I refuse to play pistol, pistol. Have you guys thought about that? I like mace main hand way more. Pistol, pistol is lame as all hell, guys. I give that a low rating. Yeah. I want mace pistol. Let's go. Yeah, something like this is going to work out just about right. Might have to check this build. Um, then play power. It's better. Well, maybe I will. Maybe I will play power. That's why I'm power elect mech. Uh, power elect mech gamers. Oh, yeah. This build is pretty sick, by the way. Oh, uh, hang on. Let's go do something interesting. Uh, okay. First, I must consume. I need volatile magic. Consume. 800. That is enough. Here we go. To, we will actually unlock Sandswept Isles just for this. Because there is a bounty we can do. Excitement abounds. Here we go. Magic Collector. We will actually blow 1,000 Voltar Magic on this. Season 4. Season 4. Get in there. Right. Then we Season 4 our way over here. Domain of Istan Sandswept Isles. Here we go. Let's go do a bounty. All right, here we go. We're hunting down Starcaller. Oh, this guy, it's honestly so hard to ever do anything alone in this bloody game, guys, seriously. It's crazy. Let's go. And we're gonna use our mortar kit to actually CC here. All right, that's what we're gonna do. Oh, he has the healing tendrils, but I actually think that's okay. Um, because we can, oh, it's got the fucking slices, man. Are you kidding me? Like. Actually unhinged. Crazy. But yeah, what you can do is, you can keep breaking this guy's uh, defiance bar, right? And because you can keep breaking his defiance bar, uh, as long as you CC a lot, you actually don't really have to worry. Uh, you don't have to worry about all of his, like, instability things, so you can just delete them pretty much. As you can see here. And this, guys, this is a build that we just boosted. We haven't bought any gear. We've literally bought zero gear. At all. Like, literally nothing. And we're already just uh, completely, like, free-farming the shit. Just rifle auto-attacking our way to victory here. And you can keep doing this. Like, you know, it will die. It'll take a while, obviously, because, you know, we haven't got the most optimized build in the universe. But we'll win. We will win into this legendary bounty. With a build that is literally from a boost. And it's honestly not even bad. By the way, like, this isn't even, not even a tiny bit remotely bad. We're a little low on boon duration right now, as you can see, so our alacrity is a little bit scuffed, but even that is actually fine. Here we go. One at five signets? It's a good point. Maybe it should be five signets. That may be what we need. Oh, I'm actually not in range of that. That's a bit unfortunate. I'm not in range of the God Emperor. But yep, CMC really can't stop you if you play this build. He is powerless against you. But yeah, the key with the Hydras is just to strafe those um, attacks, right? Strafe those attacks and you're good to go. Healing Tendril can just kill that though and just cleave it down. Need to stay closer to the mech so we get our Alacrity here. Because we do want Alac. Don't get hit by the beam. CC again. Let's go ahead and do that. I could even use my Signet for more CC if I wanted to, but I don't feel like I need to. Not currently, anyway. Seems a little unnecessary. Oh, I actually got hit there. Whoops. We get the Defiance Break. Gonna get out of that AoE. And here we go. There's a beam coming. We can just sidestep that, though. Go around this one. Here we go. You'll actually find that a lot of these... Uh, a lot of the build, the Selly builds, they're actually, like, weirdly good. They're, they're almost, like, disturbingly good. Oh, we need to shift Signet here. We got chilled there, so we couldn't get out of that AoE. Get the CC. Done. Easy. Very good. As long as we're near our mech, I think we actually should get decent alacrity uptime. Can stun break myself there. I did stay near it. I'm playing pretty safe here. I'm not, like, over committing with a lot of my uh, abilities. God damn it. Ow, 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 ow. But it's not going to work. The Hydra cannot win. 
The Hydra is powerless against me. I'm using the Mortar Kit uh, there just to CC, by the way. Dude, the Ice Hydra head actually memed me. Can you guys believe that? It's crazy. Give me boons. Don't have to dodge that. There we are. Honestly, could have gone with Naked here, I think, actually. Yeah, definitely could have gone with Naked. I did not need the Barrier Signet, but I guess it's a nice safety net to have. Hooray, we did it! No! Stun break me. Very good. This guy's dying, but we don't need to res him, really. Hooray! The bounty is down. Starcaller has fallen. To the Mechanist. To the actual celestial, only the booster gear Mechanist. <laughs> it's not half bad as well. Really is not half bad. Not a bad build.